Ladies and gents, my name is Pepperbelly, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing Insurgency Sandstorm, a game you probably no doubt have heard about, as it has been announced on the 23rd of February, so pretty much a week ago from this point. And with it, some interesting news, and of course, there was also a live stream where they did a Q&A and answered a lot of questions and gave a ton of details on what we can expect from this game and what it is and what it isn't. And I think it's pretty important to realize that this game is not a sequel or a successor. It's literally just going to be a complete remaster or remake of what we have currently just within a new engine, which is Unreal Engine 4. That's not to say they're not going to evolve the game in some key areas and add a couple of new features. Like for one, they're having a single player story mode. You wouldn't really say it's a campaign. They kind of iterated that it's not in like you don't want to define it as a campaign because a campaign kind of sounds like it's a, an extensive single player experience. Whereas what they're trying to deliver here is a focused story that actually delivers on the narrative versus having all these crazy cinematic moments and ridiculousness that most single player games have. The whole idea and premise behind the single player story mode in this is to embark on a rich narrative written around the Iraq invasion around 2003 and progressing up until modern times right now, like 2015, how the Middle East is currently standing. And it's interesting because they kind of make a note of how important the story aspect is to them. They don't want to make the game some super Hollywoodized, like, cinematic, crazy experience. They want to make it very story-driven, down-to-earth, more realistic, uh, with a high level of authenticity in the way the story is going to be delivered and what's going to be there. And more importantly, it's going to be short. They're going for about what they estimate three to five hours. So the story mode is going to be around that length, which at first I was kind of like, because I was very excited initially to hear about them having a story mode. I'm like, insurgency with a, with a story, like a single player campaign kind of thing going on. Like that's going to be really cool to see. You know, that's interesting. I, that was one of the main features I was immediately excited about once I heard about the announcement for this game. But three to five hours kind of took me back a second. I was like, man, that seems pretty short. But then I thought about it. And I realized another game I played that offered just the amount of time I needed to be able to be satisfied with what I played without overdoing it, and that would be Rise Son of Rome. I got that game on sale. I played it all the way through. It took me about five hours to complete the entire campaign, and I enjoyed every minute of it. I was actually pleasantly surprised that it felt... It was actually as short as five hours, because it felt longer than that. I actually felt like I put way more time than just five hours. And a lot of shit happened in that game. Like, a lot of cinematic moments, a lot of cool gameplay elements, a lot of things happened. So, I think going for three to five hours within Insurgency Sandstorm is actually viable. And it could give you just enough of an experience that will be satisfactory to most people without overdoing it or becoming tedious and annoying in the long run. It'll just give you everything you need. And then after that, you got cooperative and you got multiplayer to fulfill all the other aspects of what you want from the game, which is what this game always has been about. It's always been about multiplayer and cooperative. So I'm more or less content. You know, I'm not expecting something grand. I'm expecting a really cool, very detailed, authentic, story-driven single-player experience for about five hours tops. And with that alone, I'll be... Like I said, more than happy with what they're possibly going to come out with. We don't really know yet. I'm interested to see how they're going to do it because what they've said is that the game is going to start off a single player because they have character development. They have actual characters they want to introduce and kind of get you familiarized with and actually kind of have progression in that sense with how characters develop, right? Character development, basically. So anyway, th they want to start it off with you going through training yet again, similar to what Insurgency has right now, but obviously rewritten from scratch to fit within the story mode. I believe he said he thinks you're going to be playing as the Marines, but it's going to evolve over time. So you're going to start off training, which is going to be the main foundation and building block for the characters and the story as it progresses from there. 
And then as time goes on, as the years go by, things will change. In fact, they actually say a sandstorm happens and it changes the way the Middle East looks in Iraq, more specifically, and will evolve what you do where you go. Basically, you're not going to be in the Marines throughout the entire game. So the way they said is that you may, like, I think they said more like private security. So you'll end up going, like, starting off in the Marines and then as things evolve and things change and the political structure and all that crap is happening throughout the story, you'll actually kind of shift your jobs around and become something else and it'll just, it'll kind of flip-flop on how the entire game progresses, which is interesting to me. I mean, I'm interested to see, like, the idea of, okay, I'm going to start off being military and then getting in the private security sector, possibly. I don't know, really know what they have in store, but I mean, like, one of the things I actually loved from Arma 2 was the private military contractor, like, the PMC DLC pack, the expansion pack, because I don't know about you guys, but I really find the idea of being a private military contractor or, like, a mercenary, if you want to use the more, I guess, demeaning or derogatory term that most people like to associate with them, like hired guns or whatever, it's an interesting concept because they are paid a lot of money to do security jobs that are insanely, usually, depending, very high risk because you do not have the backing of the U.S. government. You're not going to have, like, all the assets that the military comes with. So usually you're on your own in certain circumstances. And I found that Arma 2's PMC really showed, like, a really dark side of being a private military contractor where if shit goes south, you're on your own. And, you know, these people are hiring you and you're in a contract, but they don't really have an obligation to go in and put themselves in danger to pull you out. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of people I know from the military who are veterans from Afghanistan, their tours overseas, were approached by a lot of private military contractors, and a lot of them were thinking, you know, like, they turned them away because, or they turned their offers away because they didn't really want to expose, put themselves at risk like that. So, I mean, it's obviously high risk, high reward kind of scenario. I mean, it'd be interesting to see if the game did evolve to that point campaign-wise or single-player story mode-wise. We won't know uh, until the details are released. And the game is not going to be coming out anytime soon. So, I mean, people... There's no reason to, like, start getting all hyped up now because it's not going to release until 2017. So that's, like, a year from now, right? We just entered 2016, and I was pretty excited for the announcement, thinking that, oh, okay, you know, they're going to release a new Insurgency game. But it's actually just a remaster on a new engine, which is totally fine. But it's not going to happen for like another year. So there's still a lot of work they got to put into the game. And they got to price it accordingly once it releases, which they guesstimate is going to be anywhere between 20 and 40 or 25 and 40 dollars. In between that range. And they're thinking of doing something to appease the fact that a lot of us on PC already own it. More importantly, the game is coming to console. And why I say importantly is because that's the only reason why this is going to exist for PC, technically, right? Because they were approached by a publisher, they got some business strategies worked out, they were doing this for about a year. And now, they are going to release it on PC because they're releasing it on console. And they know that people would be livid if, they, if the PC crowd, the PC community, didn't get a PC version of this game. It'd just be like a huge slap in the face to all of us because we'd be envious, right? An Unreal Engine 4 game looks fantastic. And in fact, if you look at the comparison screenshots that they've kind of already shown, they gave like two little snippets of what it looks like to port in some of the assets and recreate the maps on Unreal Engine 4. And the game looks like stunning, right? It already looks way, way better than the past iterations, right? They look, it looks so much better than Source, and I'm looking forward to it. One of the things I'm concerned about is performance, right? Because we currently, right now, like, looking at Ground Branch and Squad, which are both using Unreal Engine 4, optimization is a concern, right? The game, the games don't perform admirably. They're very, very, like, on average, both those games perform about the same, you know, 40 frames per second on my specs, on my hardware. And most people, it's the same, even those that have higher specs than what I have. You know, newer hardware also encounter bad performance. I mean, the only game I could say that I've played that's an Unreal Engine 4 that actually runs exceptionally well would be Unreal Tournament, because I'm pretty sure that game has gotten optimization passes plenty of times, 
and it's like, you know, Epic's baby and they're working on it themselves. So, I mean, we'll have to see, right? Obviously, this is going to be a year from now, so I'm sure that Unreal 4 will get tons of optimization passes. The engine will be worked on extensively over the course of the year. So by the time the game is even released, this may be a non-issue and everything might be running buttery smooth for everybody, even low-end spec computers, which is what we hope. I really hope that's the case because that means higher-end hardware gets exponentially more frames, which is ideal. You know, if you can get decent performance with your graphics settings on low above 60 frames per second in 1080p with you know the graphics turned down then obviously better hardware will yield far more frames at that equivalent setting and then even then you can turn up the graphics to compromise and balance it out however the hell you want so yeah i mean i'm looking forward to it obviously we're a long ways off more information will come in time and right now We'll have to see. I mean, there are a lot of things I like about Insurgency, but of course there are some things that I am bothered by, and looking at the game, they're going to have, you know, ballistics, proper projectile ballistics, no longer having hit scan, minor tweaks like that, that'll actually change the way the game plays in the long run, and since it's utilizing a new engine, they can do far more things like that to help improve the realism and authenticity of this game in favor of what I personally enjoy. My name's been Pepperbelly, thank you guys for joining me today on this video. And I'll see you guys on the next one.